early as the 1930s and early 40s was still very, very tetrous, you know, very, very uh, bit, you know, suspicious, you know, even back then. But that's, you know, that's communism is another side, another story. Um, but yeah, by the time the 1st of September 1939 comes around, um, well, really, if I go back a bit, on August 1939, Russia, uh, Stalin and Hitler signs a non-aggression pact, the Nazi-Soviet pact, because Hitler, like he is, wanted Russia, who that Germany was afraid of Russia because they were bigger, much bigger power in man and, and wealth and money, manpower and army, than Germany was. So he wanted Germ uh, Russia, sorry, um, on their side to kind of get them out of the way, kind of hypnotise them in a way, if you can kind of call it that. Um, and also, they were really, and Hitler wanted war, really wanted it, so it would really annoy uh, the British Empire uh, if an ally like Russia would go on the side of of the Germans, which they did for a little bit, but then kind of snapped out of the uh, dream and really, you know, got going by the 1940s. Um, so, 1st September 1939, Hitler invades Germany with using this brand new Blitzkrieg uh, tactic or fast lightning warfare, which Germany had basically developed over the years. So, uh, do you want to talk about a bit of Blitzkrieg, Toby? Uh, yes. So, the principles of it um, originated in kind of breaking the deadlock of trench warfare, really. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of Germany's members of the general staff had seen the First World War, and they really didn't want that again because they knew, because Germany was perhaps not the largest nation at that time, you know, Russia with its millions of people, um, the British Empire, even France at that stage, they also considered to be a threat. Mm -hmm. um, they, they really didn't want to just get bled white in a very, sta you know, static situation. Yeah. So they developed certain new tactics, like the encirclements you see in France and then later on in um, Russia, to just swallow up huge amounts of enemy troops used in tanks as the spearhead rather than supporting infantry, then let uh, the infantry mop up the remains. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a modern version, if you can call, of the German um, stormtroopers. From the First World War, very fast, very lightning, very quick shock tactics, uh, which Germany pride themselves in. Because even you know, I would say, and even you would say, Toby, they're very good. <laughs> you know, it's better than what we can do. Then you yes. know, sitting on the sidelines and drinking tea for half the war. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> and um, you know, so basically, by the, by the fourth, well, we. The, 3rd of September, by the, by the 4th of September 39, Britain declared war with Germany, Britain knows what Germany is like, um, but then doesn't, in a way, if you think about it, if we, you know, um, really, if you talk about um, in May, in terms of May 1940, 10th of May 1940, uh, Hitler, in, with his millions of Germans, invades an allied nation, which is um, France. Again, Blitzkrieg tactics, fantastically well. The British Expeditionary Force, who were stationed in France and Belgium uh, from from a year earlier, basically, not really, well, less than a year, September 39, they all rushed, flocked France to await the German invasion after, just after Poland, which never happened, of course, you know, a couple months later, uh, in 1940. A lot of those British troops and French troops and Belgian troops, of course, was unaware of the German tactic of Blitzkrieg. They knew it was you know, powerful, but they didn't know how shocking it was, so a lot of the British troops and French troops basically got evacuated, got bottlenecked into Dunkirk, Calais, and the part of Calais, that was all cut off, Dunkirk was the last bit, and that to evacuate. Um, and then, yeah, do you want to uh, cover a bit more? Yes, Toby? so, in kind of in-depth breakdown of more or less um, how that campaign really panned out, good breakdown by Tim as well, mm -hmm. is, um, the Germans sort of attacked um, the Netherlands and other countries and they lured the French and the British forward into those countries more or less. But at the same time, they attacked through the previously what would have been considered, you know, just really insurmountable obstacle mm, of yeah. the Ardennes, 
which they then attacked again through in 1944, but that's yeah. a later story. Yeah. Um, and as a result, they just were able to just sweep pretty much round the several entire armies, cut them off, and um, yeah, deposit oh, yeah hundreds of thousands. Oh yeah, definitely. Of yeah. Troops into their prisoners' yeah. war camps. And now you can tell Germany's spending a lot of money into blitzkrieg tactics and armament because I have here an original Second World War kind of early war belt buckle and it very highlights the fact that Germany is manufacturing a lot of armaments with a lot of money because if you have a look here it's got kind of a, a mottled effect which would take a lot of time and effort and money um, which would be very clear to any military collector and historian um, what was going to happen with these belt buckles by the time 1943-44 and definitely 1945 comes along um, which Toby's got a nice version of what I'm on about uh, in the uh, in his collection. So, if we go then forward to June 1941, uh, 22nd of June 1941, Germany has basically gambled with his whole army on attacking the Soviet Union. That one threat that Hitler was really, and um, Germany alone, was um, was already annoyed. You know, already. Um, feared early in the war. So if you do want to talk a bit more of that, Toby? Uh, yes, that's good. Um, so, pretty much, um, there, Hitler always had a hatred for communism, for whatever reason. Uh, he really did just have a hatred for a lot of stuff. Um, and as a result, even as early as maybe 39, even in fact through the 30s, he'd been planning to backstab Russia by um, invading them. Hmm. Now, a lot of people on the internet sometimes go, Russia was planning to invade. Oh, no. <laughs> they, they never really was. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can clearly tell that they weren't because the, the front border guards, okay, they were all in their barracks by the time the Germans invaded and just got hmm. absolutely obliterated. Yeah. You know, the, the... I mean, even as early as pretty much just after the operation started, the Germans and Russians had a trade pact where the Germans would send kind of um, tools for making things into Russia and in turn Russia would give back raw resources. Those resources were still going in trains to Germany in, yeah, as early as kind of, as late rather, as um, the 22nd of June after the operation had pretty much started. Yeah. Uh, and also that operation was very famously called Operation Barbarossa. Um, so then that, you know, was in the win um, was in the summer month, June, was quite a warm time. Germany with a lot of, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, kind of kind of shorts and t-shirt weather. <laughs> That's what they were wearing yeah. during the time. But if you skip to December 1942 when you have Germany's big attack on the main city of Stalingrad, um, in December 1942, it was, you know, minus 20 or 30 degrees below freezing. It was absolutely cold. Germany just, you know, they couldn't cope. They came in with the winter with, you know, shorts on. And they were still wearing shorts on. No, not literally shorts, but you know what I mean. Kind of weather that um, basically was suited for summer climate. But when, by the time December 42 comes along, you know, the cold hit them and millions of Germans um, basically perished under the uh, the Russian winter. Roughly between 70 and 90 million Germans were perished by the winter of, 19, of December 1942 and the Battle of Stalingrad. So, um, for part one, or episode one, uh, of the rise of Nazi Germany at that time, um, I think that's it on this episode. So, uh, uh, I'll see you in the next episode. See us. Bye.